All right. <laughs> I'm here. And I am going to play around with this really cool app that FontSelf made for the iPad, which lets you just make your own font directly on the iPad. It's like super simple to use and it's pretty amazing. So I thought I would just play around and just make like a, I don't know, a doodly font, just like not worry about trying to keep the letters consistent, maybe just try different things for all the different letters. I don't know when I would actually use a font like this, but I just thought it would be fun to do. So hope you guys are interested in seeing that. Feel free to give me some suggestions. Let me know where you're watching from in the comments and feel free to ask questions as we go. I'm gonna open up this uh, this little bubbly that is not sponsored by bubbly. I don't even know where bubbly comes from. Maybe Target? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I need a beverage. This is a chaotic start. Hope my sound is good. I'm using a different micro microphone this time. So I'm gonna move over to my iPad and just get into this because this intro is a little long. So let me switch. It worked. All right, awesome. So this is the font self interface. And it's crazy how easy it is to use. So you can start with just like a blank page or like a template and then there's like different type styles that you can use. I tend to just stick with the sans one. I just like it very simple just to have that sort of structure by uh, just to see what the letter's for. I was distracted by Patrick's response saying that this was sponsored by Sam Hain, which is on my shirt, which I think is a pretty funny comment. I was actually trying to add it to the window, but I don't see that option anymore because, I don't know, I, up, I updated the software that I use right before doing this and it's a little bit different. Uh, a pro tip, don't update the software on something that you're using right before you're about to use it. <laughs> All right, let me, let's, uh, let's get into this, this app. Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining. I can star it. I don't know what that does. Wanted to add it to the uh, to the chat. I loved that feature. All right. So let's just get into this. I'm going to tap the sans option and you just get this interface here with the different letters. And you can choose the uppercase or lowercase or the numbers, punctuation, other symbols. You can also choose like the uh, extended GIF range if you want more options, which is pretty cool. So I don't know, I'm just gonna get into it. So I'm gonna start with the uppercase and just zoom in and start drawing an A. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna grab this brush. I'm gonna change the, bring the pressure down a little bit. You guys, my Apple Pencil's not working, hold on. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Uh, Pam says when she grows up, she wants to be like me. She's just a little girl of 32 years old. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you're a spring chicken. I'm 40. I don't know what I'm doing when I grow up. Okay, my Apple Pencil works. All right, we are back on track. Okay, so let me just figure out my settings here. I need more pressure sensitivity, I guess. That's pretty good. And then what else do we want? Turn the streamline up, I guess. So you just start drawing letters 
and then they will appear up in the top. So I'm just going with a, a drippy A, because why not? Got to start somewhere. Just uh, making some booger type, booger letters. So where's uh, where are you guys watching from? I need to get better about like scheduling these ahead of time so that we can get a better uh, amount of people viewing because I just like willy nilly do these because I'm like, oh, I should do a live stream. And then I just schedule it for like an hour away and like no one can prepare for that. And then I feel bad because there's not a lot of people here. So put some booger dots. We got an A. But look, as you see at the top, it just puts it right in there. So it's already making a font. So we just go in and like, I don't know, we'll skip around. Let's do the L because it's right next to the A in Lazy Dog. Maybe we'll do a uh, scripty L. And then it's right there. They look terrible together, but that's, that's what happens when you do willy nilly letters. We got New Jersey, we got Dallas, awesome. Well, let's do a B. I don't know what kind of B. Maybe we'll do like a little fancy serif thing. So you can just sort of hold and fill like you can in Procreate, which is a nice feature. I'm trying to not overthink any of these things because it's just like, I'm making a doodle font, so it's nonsense. But it's hard for me to not get carried away. Let's do a, uh, a Sam Hain inspired letter. Maybe we'll do the S. Let me turn my streamline down so I can get some grit in there. What does this S look like? It's like, like that, and then it's real fat at the top. So we got that gritty S, fill that in. Go, 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 okay. That's pretty Sam Hain-ish. I just feel like this software is so cool because it just starts filling in the letters and it's like all you have to do afterwards is just save it and then you have a font that you can use anywhere. Uh, Patrick is asking, is this free software? I think it's a one-time fee, but I don't remember because I've had it for a little bit. Um, it's not like a subscription thing. It's not completely free though. But it's cheaper than the Illustrator plugin. The Illustrator plugin is the one I used if you saw my video where I made a, a typeface. Uh, David's from Ventura, California. Awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining. All right, what should what kind of what are we gonna do here? What kind of letters should I make? Anyone have any ideas? I go wiggly, wiggly H. To be honest, I don't. I mean, I'm having fun drawing these letters, but I, I've been asked so many times, like, hey, why don't you make more fonts? Because I really like how letters interact with each other and like drawing full words and like compositions. But I'm not crazy about just drawing individual, digital letter, uh, individual letters. I guess this is more fun because I'm not trying to like make them consistent but it gets a little tedious if you're doing like a full font of like one specific style. I do enjoy like this where I'm just sort of playing and drawing individual letters and experimenting with different lettering styles. But again, I'm not sure what the application would be for this kind of typeface. Let's, uh, 
let's make like a 3D E. But it's just so easy to use this um, this software. Like you don't have to know anything, and it's just so intuitive. The hold time for filling is a little bit longer than you would expect. I feel like it's slightly longer than the Procreate, or if maybe your your hand shifts a little bit. I guess mine might be doing that because I've maybe had a little too much coffee. My son was up at like five o'clock this morning, which was not ideal. Oh, so we have an update. So Saturday morning said, it looks like it's free and has a one-time purchase of $13.99 Canadian. So yeah, I think it's $9.99. This is for more fun. I wonder, so I guess you can play with it. Uh, Maybe you're limited on the amount of fonts you can do. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I probably should have looked that up before making this video. This is my impulsivity coming out where I just, I'm like, I'm gonna go live. And then I don't really think it through. So I'm making a face for the C, I think, yeah. And put an eyeball, maybe another eyeball, go like that. I don't know. Trying to not overthink it. I'm just having fun here. We're just playing around. We're just making letters. It's not, it's not serious. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, maybe like 2010, I was doing this like lettering workshop for this book that was like playing with type or something like that. And it was about like hand lettering and stuff like that. And it was through the AIGA. So there's a lot of people in the AIGA who are very serious about type. And there was a couple of people who were really mad at the word type being used because it like, it was not type. It was like illustrative lettering and not even that. And this guy who is this famous uh, typographer in the, like area commented on like the promo that had my work in it and called it amateur hour and it hurt my feelings and I still think about it to this day but like he was he just couldn't see the difference that it wasn't like I was trying to design a typeface I was just doing illustrative lettering as illustration but that was early on in my career as a freelance illustrator this is my first year actually as a freelance illustrator so it was not the confidence boost that I was hoping for. <laughs> yes, uh, we are learning live. <laughs> or if I don't even know if the learning part is happening. People definitely get worked up over type versus lettering. It's, uh, yeah, if you like call lettering stuff typography, people have a, a brain hemorrhage. So look, we're just playing around here and we've got stuff filling in at the top, which is kind of fun. I don't know. I don't know if this is interesting. Maybe it is. What do you guys think? <laughs> I'm currently working on like my new video for next uh, for next week because I try to upload videos on Tuesdays, and I was doing like a taking a sketch to final type thing, and I was trying to do it in like real time, and I'm bad at like estimating how long things take, and I was just looking at the footage and it's like two hours in it should not be that long and I'm hoping that there's just like I don't know stuff in there that I maybe got interrupted and forgot about or something like that but I have to edit that hopefully it's not uh I don't know this whole 
making videos is a, a learning process and everything takes longer than I think it's going to. They are fun to do. It's just a little, uh, can be tedious sometimes. Like I enjoy the editing process, but then sometimes I'm like, okay, this is taking way too long. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just playing around. Maybe we'll make this black. Um, I don't know what to talk about in regards to this because I'm just playing. Does anyone have any questions? It doesn't have to be about this. I'll answer questions about anything. We got to know. Uh, Patrick said it could be fun downloadable when it's done. Yeah, uh, I would be happy to make it downloadable for you guys. Yeah, so the, um, the this app is is pretty new. So FontSelf has had the plugin for Illustrator and Photoshop for a long time, but this is something that they've been working on because they wanted something that was more just easy for people to experiment with and not... Like with the plugin in Illustrator, there's a lot that you have to sort of know and be comfortable with. And I don't know, it's a bit over the head of some people who just want to try and play. And this sort of takes away all of those pain points. You like my t-shirt? Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mark, this is vector and it is pressure sensitive. There's lots of different brushes. Well, not a lot, but there's like, um, a brush, which is what I'm using. There's pencil, there's like calligraphy type pen, and then you can control the pressure sensitivity and the streamline, the angle, all that stuff. Like if you like to do like actual calligraphy type stuff, which is not how I work, you can absolutely choose those brushes. I just like a very simple brush, but there's also markers too. So I don't know, you can play around with those. I'm gonna go back to my simple brush. Oh, and the pressure sensitivity. I don't know if I mentioned that, but you can control how much I have mine set to 90 and it's a, seems like a nice amount. It's like the amount that I want, sort of equivalent to, I don't know, like a felt tip pen that I would used to draw with before I switched to digital. This is equivalent to like the brushes that I use in Fresco or even Procreate. Mm, I don't know what to do with this. Maybe put some decoration. Do a little bit of... I don't know if you guys can... Oh, no, you can't see because there's not a camera on it. I'm just sharing my screen. I got like a gouge in my paper like screen protector. And it's like a half circle. I don't know what happened to it. But... It's sort of good timing because I actually ordered the Bellamond one that a couple people recommended to me, which uh, I didn't know about before that, but some people said it was really great, so I was curious. So I grabbed one and I figured I would compare it to the Paperlike since I have to take this one off anyway, since it got this gouge in it. It doesn't really affect what I'm doing, but I, I can't deal with it. This eye kind of sucks. I don't know. Maybe it's okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, ba -ba. Patrick, you said your fonts available and drawn in Illustrator and imported into font software. Very long and tedious, but when I get hyperfocus, it's fun. So yeah, um, I can see that. The only ones that I've, I think I've done all the fonts that I've made using the font self plugin for Illustrator, which um, I'm a fan of how that works. I like that it's all within Illustrator. Um, it's, uh, I made a font the other day to use for this Skillshare class I'm working on, which is like creating an animated scene in Adobe Fresco. And I did like an underwater scene. So I wanted some letters that sort of, um, I don't know, had that like wiggly underwater thing, but I had to do like all the title cards. So I made a quick font doing it that way. So I drew it all in Fresco and then opened it in Illustrator and then use font self to make it into a font. The, the, uh, the font self plugin works really well. It's, um, it's not as cheap as this. I think it's like $30, but it's really robust and, um, works really well. Uh, I love it. Um, but it's certainly not a free app. Oh, and you need to check out Fresco too. I agree. Fresco is fantastic. I don't know. I'm running out of ideas here for letters. What kind of letter do you want to, do you guys want to see? Uh, Pixeliota asked, can I make fonts with font self and share with my friends or sell them? Yes, absolutely. So if you're using this app or the plugin, you can export your font and then you can uh, do whatever you want with it. So you could sell it online or send it to your friends. Um, there's, um, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Oh yeah, thirty dollars is definitely better than the six hundred dollars that Font Lab costs, uh, and it's I think it's it's really good. They also have this new feature that they added that does like smart um, kerning, so it does a really good job where you just turn it on and it'll go in and I don't know use some sort of artificial intelligence or whatever to adjust the spacing between the letters. And then after it does that, you can go in and, and like make global controls. Like if you want to adjust the letter spacing to make it wider or tighter or something like that, uh, you can do that and it'll maintain the adjustments that it made. Like if it put two letters closer together or more far, far apart, uh, it's a real time saver because in the past when I'd done it, I would spend a lot of time like adjusting individual letter spacing. But I found with the smart one, it sort of just does it for me. And I don't need to change it after that. I don't know what I'm doing here with this. Giving it some fur. It's a furry F. I don't know. Maybe we'll go in with the eraser and no, oh, it's too big. And I guess the eraser is not ideal for that. Lightning bolt K. I love it. Thanks, Patrick. I'm going to do that. Did you suggest the fuzzy F? Did I listen or did I just read your mind? All right, let's get this. Let's get this lightning bolt K going. So maybe we'll. Got that lightning bolt. 
You can also copy and paste pieces. Like if you don't want to keep drawing stuff over again, like if I wanted to use this lightning bolt as like the basis for the font, I could grab the selection tool, click on it, and then you can What am I doing here? Oh, and then you can hit that copy thing and it'll copy it and then you can paste it. All right. Um, I think I need to rotate this. Oh no. It didn't keep it all together. Let's undo that. I wonder if I can uh, fix that. I don't know if there's an option for that. Maybe not. Well, let's see if I can make it work without rotating it. Let me switch to the brush. Which one do you think is best for designers, PC or iPad? Well, I mean, so if by designer, you mean like illustrate design uh, and you could only have one. I mean, if I could only have one, I would have the iPad, but I feel like if it's like classic design and you're doing layouts and stuff like that, you really need a computer. Um, I certainly use both. This K is not as good as I hoped. There's one feature that I've been asking for, and it's like the ability to have like a sketch layer. And I think that would make things better because I need to figure this out and then draw over it. And that's not really an option right now. Oh, I need to turn my streamline down. Everything is chaos. I'm really wanting to do this lightning bolt K. I'm very invested in it. Oh, Patrick, you answered saying depends on the type of design. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I meant. That's a very good point because like some stuff you need a computer. I mean, technically, I guess you. Well, I don't know. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with the iPad now, but. Do, 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 do. I don't know what to say. I don't know if this is going to be good, but I'm going to fill it in and then make an assessment. I mean, it's kind of cool. What do you guys think? Does it need, does it need work? Oops. I guess it's okay. Let me just clean up some of these angles. Does it read like a K? It's pretty, pretty K-ish. Let's see it up there. Yeah, it looks like a K, I guess. All right, let's make an R. <laughs> I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna turn my streamline back up because I depend on it so much, especially earlier in the day when I'm highly caffeinated and my hands are a little bit shaky. Need the streamline to help me out. This is basically an R that I draw 
all the time. We need to do a letter so we can finish a word up top. I feel like that'll be satisfying. Phil, Phil, Phil. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ksenia. And Patrick, uh, you said, what made you move away from graphic design and move over to focusing on illustration? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it was actually an accident. I always thought I wanted to be a graphic designer, mainly because when I was a kid, I used to take apart like the um, like album packaging, like my parents' records, and I would like redraw my own. And then one time, I think it was my uncle, he saw me doing it. And he said, oh, you're going to be a graphic artist one day. And I had no idea what that meant. I was like, well, what are you talking about? And he's like, that's the person who makes this, this, the, the art for the albums. And I was like, still didn't really register with me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Cause like, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that it was like a job. Um, but he's like, yeah, that's uh, someone's job to make the album artwork. And it totally blew my mind. I remember thinking like, why, like why on earth does my mom work at the post office? Like, doesn't she know she can draw pictures? Um, obviously I was a little kid, so I was an idiot and I didn't really understand anything. Um, so I just felt like I, I discovered this like secret and I had to just, it was like the only option for me. It was the only thing that made sense. And I remember being in like, career day at school and people are talking about like what they wanted to be when they grew up. You're like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a cop. I want to be an astronaut or a doctor. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that shit. That sounds terrible. Um, so I was like dead set on it. So I went to art school. This is a long answer. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I always like, was like in art classes and, I sort of identified as like, like being good to draw was like the only thing I could do. Like I was really bad, like sports and stuff like that. And I almost actually gave up on it because I remember in high school, there was these like girls in my class and both of them could draw better when we did like a still life project. And I was like, oh my God, if I can't even draw this apple as good as them, like I have no hope. But anyway, uh, I ended up going to art school, studying graphic design and became a graphic designer. And I had what I thought was like my dream job for a while. I was like doing a lot of stuff in the music industry and a lot of branding and it was really fun. But at that time I like decided to do a daily drawing project. This was like 2000, the end of 2007. And I was just, like committed to doing a new drawing every day and posting them online. And after about a year, I started getting like random projects based on those drawings. And that happened more and more and more. And then the economy crashed in 2009, the design studio I worked at imploded and I decided to try to make it work as a freelance illustrator. So if that didn't happen, I never would have even considered illustration. Like I, I didn't even take any illustration classes in undergrad. I like signed up for one, went in there and it was like, I was like, oh boy, this is not for me. It was had like nothing to do with the kind of illustration that I do. But uh, that's how I transitioned away. And I don't know, it is, it feels amazing and it feels too good to be true still to this day. Hey Kevin, uh, thanks for joining. No worries on being late. This was pretty last minute. Uh, so I guess that was a very long-winded answer for that. <laughs> um, oh, you were following me when I was doing the daily drawings. I actually did the daily drawing project for 14 years, which is crazy. 
I was like way too scared to stop. I thought that, you know, I had sort of built my whole career around them or like that's how I had gotten any, any of the work that I had done. So I was like, well, if I stop, it's all going to go away. So I kept doing them. I intended to do them forever. But then when we had a baby, I sort of broke and like I couldn't keep up with client work, uh, sleep, life. And I just stopped doing it. And my career hasn't ended yet. It could still happen though. So hopefully this uh, YouTube thing can help me survive. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this pee over here. I guess it's okay. I'll leave it. I'm just zooming in and out because I don't know what to do. Um, Let's uh, make a face with the M. When in doubt, make something into a face. That's what I always say. Not exactly sure what the face will be. But we got eyes. Maybe this is a, a nose. Maybe we'll put some teeth on it. It's like a, a a snout or something. Maybe it's like a dino. I don't know what to tell you about this. This is... I don't know what we're doing here. But I said it's a doodle font, so we're doodling. I'll put some nostrils. I don't know. It's something. Is it should it be mad? I don't know. <laughs> um. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, getting into classes like Skillshare is awesome for you. Thanks. Yeah, I've been I've been doing Skillshare for a while, but I've been bad about like doing it regularly enough. I've been lucky enough to become one of their top teachers, but I don't have a lot of classes and I've been trying to get this new one done for a while. And it I don't know why it's taken so long because I've made all these YouTube videos that are, I don't know, almost as complicated, like some of the tutorial videos could be Skillshare classes on their own. So who knows? But I'm mostly done filming this class. I just have to finish editing it and like make some title cards and stuff like that. I'm excited though, because it's so much better quality than like my old classes. I've learned so much in terms of editing and video and lighting from doing this channel. Um, I'm obviously still learning because some of it's not the best but it's getting there and it's really going to improve things over there as well. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Um, You said that you enjoyed my video on ADHD. Um, If I take any meds for it. Yeah, I do. I'm on, um, I take, uh, Adderall, um, like, uh, I think it's Adderall XR, like extended. Um, it made a a huge difference for me. I didn't get diagnosed until I was like into my thirties and I didn't even know I really had it. I just thought I was weird. Um, but it really is, uh, made a big difference for me. It's like, it was almost like it just quieted everything down that was like going on in my head. 
it just sort of um it's funny because some people like think like so many people take like Adderall in college to like just go crazy and like hyper focus. But when you actually have ADHD, it doesn't really do that. It just sort of makes your brain work normally. Like you can just like do a normal tasks and not just be all over the place. Turn that N into a worm. Okay. Oh, I already, how about we'll do, we'll make the W a worm. Uh, yeah. So, um, Patrick, you're saying you're on Ritalin, but you might see if they switch you to Vyvanse. So I actually, um, I have a subscription for a very low dose of Ritalin as well, because sometimes I, I usually teach a class a semester and sometimes it's in the evening. And by that time, my, uh, the Adderall is like gone. So it was like a five milligram dose and that helps me get through that. Um, I did try Vyvanse for a little while, but I stopped, I switched back. Um, I can't remember exactly why. I think maybe it was giving me headaches. There was some issue with it. I don't remember what it was though. D. Sembin, you did the Morphing Words course on Skillshare. Uh, awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, that's a really old one. Um, the quality is probably awful, but I'm glad that you found it useful. I need to think of um, an idea for another class because I'm wrapping up this one. And when you're in the top teacher thing, you're supposed to like do a new class at least every six months, which sounds totally manageable, but somehow it seems impossible when I'm doing it. So I'm going to do that. So we got our W. This is like zooming in and out thing. I didn't notice how much I do it until I'm editing video for like these video, editing footage for like these videos that I'm doing. I do it like crazy. I had no idea why. I mean, I guess it's like looking big and small, but sometimes I'm just doing it for no reason. It's just like a nervous tick or something. All right, I feel like we should do, I don't know what to do with you. Maybe we'll make it like rock-ish or something, I don't know. What time is it, 12.44, okay. I need to make sure that I end this at one. I have a bunch of other stuff to do today. And if I don't pay attention, I'll end up just doing this for 800 hours, which would be fun, but not ideal in terms of me getting things done, especially because it's a Friday. And for me, um, so my kid goes to daycare during the week, but not on the weekends. And I can't even like have my iPad out because he would just want to grab it from me. So it's hard for me to get anything done on the weekends, except for when he's in bed. Let's see. So it's 12.45. We got 15 minutes. Let's see if I can, let's see if we can get through this font. We got... I'm not going to do the lowercase, I don't think. We'll see. Let's just let's just muscle through these letters. Start throwing out some, give me some ideas, everyone. We got a V, a X, a Y, and a Z. I'm going to do a scripty 
bubbly, wiggly Y. Phil, Phil, Phil. Okay, we got a Y. Um, Z. Let's uh make some lines. I don't know why. I'm just gonna make some lines. Making the most useless font ever. Bacon X. I like it. Okay. So get some bacons. Got bacons, and then I guess you do like those fat lines. Is this what bacon looks like? Am I doing bacon right? I don't know if this looks like bacon. I'm planning on filling it in to see. Is that is that bacony? I think this is bacon-ish, right? We didn't do a pizza letter. That was stupid. Do we have any left? Oh, we've got a pizza letter. Happy days are here at last. We're gonna make a pizza letter. Um, I feel like I should be saying something. Is that, that like bacon? Kevin, you dig the bacon. Thank you. They usually have the one strip down the middle. Oh man, I ruined it. I, I don't know. I feel like I, that's bacon. All right, let's get some pizza action. Start with some crust. Do a little wiggly line for the crust, like that. Let's get some, bring the underside down, then we get some cheese action. Get some drippy cheese, like that. A little more cheese, a little cheese action. Bring that over, maybe make some crust lines. There's some Pepperonis. It's funny that I always draw pepperoni on pizza, but it's not like something I order a lot. I think I just like it uh, aesthetically. Pepperoni dots. And then I feel like you need a few random dots on the pizza itself. I don't know what they are. Seasoning, whatever. It's pretty pretty decent pizza. Um, hey, look at that. We got a whole, whole typeface. Is there anything on there that's bugging me? I think the Z is a little weak. How are we doing on time? We got 10 minutes and I got a bunch of stuff to do. <laughs> I just don't, I'm not happy with the Z. Oh no, we got, we got spam in our group. We got uh, private dating chat girls. How'd that happen? Does that mean I made it? Cause we got, uh, we got spammed in the comments.
All right, Z. Let's um let's make it a lightning -y Z to go with the other lightning K. Let's just pull it out a little bit and then thicken the center part of the bolt so it reads a little bit more like a Z. I guess it's okay. This Y is a bit problematic because of how it messes up the spacing. So let's uh, redo that. Let's make it like a real fat letter. That's pretty funny. We'll put the little wrinkles in there. Throw a period and an exclamation point and call it great. <laughs> um, yeah, we need some of that stuff. So let's, we definitely need exclamation point. Let's, uh, a little period. How about we'll do the world's tiniest little skull. Question mark? Like a drippy. Put some little drips in there. I can make the bottom part of it like a drip coming down. Comma. Can make a little pizza slice. Tiniest little pizza. That Y needs a bit on the bottom to look like Mickey Mouse glove. Oh. <laughs> That's funny, it does sort of look like a Mickey Mouse glove. Um, we can do, oh, what do we got? We got six minutes. Let's, let's do a speed round on some numbers. Do a wiggly. Oh, we'll do a. Like, um, I don't know, this number one. <laughs> Maybe we can give it some stripes or something. Like it's a race thing. I don't know. Phil. Okay. Well, let's do a fatty two. Looks a little bit like a, a Z. I think if we go like that, we'll make it a little more two-ish. Um, no, it's just bad. It's just bad. I'm sorry, everyone. That too is bad. Um, Weston, thanks for saying this is amazing. Um, where can you download it when I'm done? Um, that's a good question, but I will figure it out. 
and I will update the link in the video description with the download and I'll post it in like the community tab too. There we got four minutes. Let's let's get some let's get some stupid numbers in here. Is it even possible? Oh, we're we're close. Let's fill that in. Let's do a four minutes to one p.m. Doing wiggly letters are fun. All right, we got five. I am going to click this and then do this. I don't know what we're doing here. Just trying something out. I don't know if we click that. That's a kind of cool five, maybe. I think I like it. That's better. Six. Let's make the six like evilly like a like it would be in a 666 thing. Why aren't you feeling? Okay. Zoom, okay. Seven. Let's make the seven. Um, like fire. Eight. We're making a face. Wait, that makes it not look like an eight. We got to do the overall shape first. And then... Let's put the mouth down there and then maybe it's a cyclops. Put some teeth. Or maybe we can have two eyes. No, I think it's a cyclops. Give it a little, no, that's too big. Too big. The eraser sizing is kind of wild. All right, we're at nine. Is it one o'clock? Robot eight or nine. Um, I'll try to make a robot nine since this is the last one. Um, I know the easy thing to do would be to make the tail part of it like a, an arm. Gee whiz. Okay, and then we can close that off, make a little thing like that, and then we can put like a little claw, and then Give it some lines. 
And now, I guess the top part of it, draw the circle. Maybe we just make it like a fill that in black and we can put like a robot -y face in here. Is that robot -y? I don't know. I don't know what those lines are for. I just felt like maybe it was going to make it look like a robot. Maybe like that. That's kind of robot-y. All right. We've got uh, most of a typeface. So what you do now is you just go to export font file. And we could call it. We'll call it Doodle Live because I did it live. We hit export and then saved files, wherever, save. And now it's a font that you can just use it wherever you want.